Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here with the Meeple family, and today I've got another quick how to play and review video for you, and this game is called Raccoon Robbers. So let's head down to the table and I'll show you how to set it up and give you an idea of how the turns work. And at the end, I'll be here to tell you what my thoughts are on Raccoon Robbers. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when setting up Raccoon Robbers is arrange the three houses on the play area next to each other. These basically serve as our game board, so you definitely wanna make sure everyone is able to reach them as well. You're gonna notice here that the blue house and the red house have a token at the top. So this token actually detaches and it's double-sided. Now this blue one here is a little bit more unique because it is going to have a three and four player side, which is depicted here by the four crows. And if you're playing with a two player game, you're going to want to have the two crows showing. So for this scenario, I'm gonna set us up as if we're playing with four players. So I will leave the four crows face up. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is build a path all the way to the golden trash can. And this trash can is really what signifies the winner of the game. Whatever one of our boss raccoons is able to get on this path and actually be the first to arrive at the golden trash can will be the winner of the game. Now, when it comes to setting up this path, there's no real rhyme or reason to it, you just want to spread it out the best you can. You're gonna have five of these big common fields and then 13 of the smaller ones. Like I said, just try to distribute them as evenly as possible. There's no right or wrong way to set up your path. Of course, each player will choose a color and put their boss raccoon on the path and their smaller raccoons one in front of each house. Go ahead and shuffle all the raccoon cards and each player will draw a hand of four. Each player will also take one swap card token and place it in front of them. Now setup is complete and you're ready to play Raccoon Robbers. So let's get into how these turns work. You're gonna have three different options on your turn and I'm gonna go through these with you in detail. You can climb, be mischievous, or leap off of a building, allowing you to move your boss raccoon. So let's first look at the cards and the different ways you can climb. The first type of cards you're gonna see are these green, blue, and red one arrow up cards. You can see that each of these cards matches one of our houses. So if I'm the blue player and I have this as my hand and I want to go up on the green house, I need to play my green up arrow which will allow me to take one movement. Now, if my hand looked like this and I had several green up arrows, I could use all three of them to move up three fields. Now let's look at these double arrow cards. These work in a similar way and do have corresponding matching colors to each of the houses our raccoons have to climb up. But these cards have a unique exception to them. If I'm the blue player, and my raccoon is in the lowest position at the start of my turn, instead of these counting for only one movement each, they will count for two. So if I play this two arrow green card, I'll be able to move up two spaces. Now keep in mind that the lowest position also applies when you're standing in front of the house. Otherwise, it will only count as one movement. Now let's talk about the last type of climbing card. These are wild climbing cards and they can be used as red, blue, or green. These wild cards will follow the same movement rules as a one arrow and a two arrow. Just keep in mind, when you play wild cards, you may only play wild cards. Now, in addition to moving, at the beginning of your turn, you're going to need to choose a house that your raccoon is gonna move up. And you're going to need to state like, I'm moving up at the green house. And all of your movement and mischief, which we'll talk about in a moment, will need to take place at only that house. Now let's talk about this last card type, which is mischief. Mischief cards can be played on their own or after your raccoon has climbed. These mischief cards make an opponent's raccoon move downward one field for each arrow that you play. If you play several mischief cards on your turn, you may split them up to move more than one opponent raccoon or perform them all on one single opponent. Just keep in mind, if you are climbing on your turn as well, 
you can only play mischief cards after you've already performed all your climbing cards. Now, let's look at the spaces on the house. You can see that some spaces only have room for one raccoon, while other spaces have room for up to four. These are called single fields, while these that can fit up to four are called common fields. Only one raccoon can be in a single field at any given time. Now up to four raccoons can share the common field. Each time a raccoon's movement ends on a single field where another raccoon is already present, that raccoon will need to be moved down. Now let's look at another scenario. Let's say I'm the orange player and I want to move my orange raccoon up two spaces. I can see here that the white raccoon already occupies that place. So they will get knocked down. But the yellow player already occupies that space. So the yellow player will get knocked down giving the white player the space below the one I took. This causes a chain reaction, and you can see that the chain reaction will typically stop in the common field. All right, now that we've gone over all of the cards and some of the rules of movement concerning the raccoons on the houses, let's go over how we leap from a house and move our boss raccoon. And really, this is how we win the game, so this is important. Now let's say I'm the blue player. At any time before my turn, I can decide that I want to leap. In order to leap, I need to discard two climbing cards that match the color of the house I want my raccoon to leap from. Now typically, when we're playing cards, they have to be of the same kind. But in a leap situation, you are able to exchange one of your colored cards for one wild. Once I've discarded my two cards that match the house color I want to leap from, I will remove my raccoon and put him back at the bottom of the house. Since my raccoon leapt off of the fifth floor, I can move my boss raccoon five spaces. Now let's go over these boss spaces. You can see here on the path, we have single fields and common fields for the boss raccoons too. So just like on our houses, if a player were to land on the same space as another raccoon, they will knock that raccoon back one space. Now in a common space, multiple raccoons can land. So just like in our houses, chain reactions can occur here, sending players back if someone lands on their single field space. Now we've looked at how a turn works, so we can see that we're going to have a couple options. We can take our smaller raccoons and we can climb and or cause mischief on a house, or we can decide once we're high enough on a house, we may want to leap off, or we may want to leap off even sooner, making sure that no one causes mischief, knocking us down even further. Now when you're done with your turn, you're gonna draw two additional cards from the deck. And don't worry, there is no limit to how many cards you can have in your hand. But each player does have to play at least one card on their turn. If at any time you run out of the raccoon cards, no worries, just shuffle the discard pile, which you'll probably have to do a couple times and keep playing. The last thing I wanna go over are the different markers on top of the blue and red house. I also wanna talk about the rules for the swap your hand token that each player received at the beginning of setup. So let's go back to the table and we'll look at how these work. When your raccoon moves into the top space on the red or blue house, you're entitled to the bonus marker. You'll go ahead and take it and place it in front of you. Now keep in mind, if another raccoon moves into this space, they will steal the bonus marker from you, only if they remember to do so. If they don't remember to do so, then you get to keep it in front of you. Now let's go over what these bonus markers do. The red wild marker allows you to use all of your red climbing cards as wild climbing cards, and this also applies to leaping. The way this blue bonus marker works is when you are able to move your boss raccoon due to your other raccoons leaping from a house, you can move your boss raccoon one additional space, but you also have to move the player one space that is in last place. If there are players tied for last place, you get to choose which player to move. On the two player side, you just simply will move your player one additional space. 
not your opponent. At the beginning of each game, all the players will receive one of the swap card tokens. This token will allow you to exchange one or more of the cards from your hand once per game. In order to do this, you can turn your tile upside down to show it's been used. Put any number of cards into the discard pile, then draw the same number of cards from the draw pile. Afterwards, take your turn as normal. The game will end when the first raccoon reaches the golden trash can. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me as I walked you through how to play Raccoon Robbers. As always, I hope to just give you an idea of how the game works and plays so that you can decide if it's a good fit for your home and your gaming table. So we have played this game a lot. This is a really simple game. Uh, as you can see, you know, you're, you're moving your raccoons, uh, based on the colors and the amount of arrows you have in your hand for that color. And you're also causing mischief. It definitely has some take that. I will say there were some really frustrating moments in the game, which uh, when I say frustrating, I mean that in the best of ways, where you wanted to leap off a building so badly because you were at the top and you could move your boss raccoon, you know, six or four spaces, and you just could not get the cards you needed to leap off the building. I kept running into that issue and I know a couple other people in my family did as well. And before you could even leap off the building, someone knocked you down, causing mischief, uh, or you were put in some kind of a comboing effect where, you know, it was a ricochet effect where they knocked down someone at the top and it ended up that you were not even on the house anymore and back on the ground floor. So this is a really good game and let me just add that the components on this game are awesome. Now I didn't quite go into this on the video but the way that these houses assemble and come apart is just really simple. They just kind of lock into place and it makes them really easy to store as well and these are really thick and sturdy so it's uh, it's not something I feel like is going to break or fall apart anytime soon. These components were definitely made to last. I love the theme. I love the artwork. It is very, very fun. Now the cards definitely just have like a generic feel to them, but they're very functional and that's kind of the purpose they serve in the game. Little meeples, raccoon meeples did come with stickers. I did not get a chance to sticker them all because I was having a hard time getting them aligned. That was a me problem, not a game problem. I'm not a huge fan of stickering my meeples. I think it looks really good. Like you can see here how good this looks, you know, versus my little guy. He looks naked, this one. <laughs> so at some point I am gonna sticker all these because it gives them some personality and the artwork for all of them is slightly unique and different, which I think is really clever and fun. So overall, this game is definitely staying in our family's collection. We absolutely loved it. We don't really have any other games like this that have that take that and push and pull, um, especially in a family realm, um, but it was still fun. Like I could see us getting this out with friends and just kind of as a filler game, playing it because it has that racing element. You're trying to race to get to the golden trash can and people are knocking you down and you're hoping you can sneak up houses without anyone noticing how high you are. And you're also trying to make sure you have the right cards to leap off. That really messed me up several times when we played this. I really need to hold on to my cards. I get so excited that I can climb the house and then I'm stranded up there and I can't jump down. So anyway, we really loved Raccoon Robbers. I think the artwork is phenomenal and it is just a really fun game. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this quick uh, how to play and review of Raccoon Robbers. This is a really fun game that our family has enjoyed and thank you for allowing us to share it with you. If you haven't already, we'd love to have you guys give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you later. Life is a winding road no telling where it goes